拿出来给你翻开啊！看不着现在。看着现在看着是鸡蛋。看不看了？我给你穿过这个镜头。哦，翻过来。哇，那么大一头。哦，那奶奶你说。是不是？胖了吗？胖了，不是你剪头了吧？头短了以后也显得脸大，是不是看着有点更年轻？中国现在都说的不吃腌制东西，腌制东西对身体不好。但是呢，咱们都咱们东北，全国好像都吃，但东北比较严重。你看东三省，它都大白菜多吗？嗯，都吃腌酸菜。嗯。现在我在网上看，全国各地都吃，都说吃腌制腌制品对身体不好。为什么？那咱们吃一辈子。为什么对身体不好啊？谁说的？就是一到四十四大岁的都是腌制品。那你来说一句 hello 啥的。好。你好，爷爷。哎。说开吧，啊，开胃。啊。就是这个有有好好感。嗯。哎。说声好。老叔，今天忙吗？是不是？怎么大家都说我胖了？哦，有点肉了。真的吗？拜拜，奶奶再见啦。To French guy cooking. Hello, bonjour à tous. Donc aujourd'hui,、euh, je vais vous montrer un plat canadien très facile, très célèbre, très chic, une vraie mélange des saveurs. Wow! wow. C'est la meilleure recette authentique pour la île de la Badi biryani. Mais en fait,、euh, because I'm a fit guy, au lieu du riz basmati. Nous avons utilisé du couscous. Allez, c'est parti. I wonder this about dishes, just as I do about those of us who move to this country. At what point is a dish appropriated and assimilated, and at what point does it retain its heritage and actually change the culture at large? When, in the course of cooking and discussing and selling a dish, does say. Rice cakes cooked in fermented chili paste become dakboki italicized, become dakboki no emphasis, become dakboki in the original script. And when does it just stay? Rice cakes cooked in fermented chili paste and is appropriated as such. Take this dish, tuan bai rou. It's virtually non-existent in the American mainstream, but if it ever does get its moment, who gets to be the one to say what it is? I mean, will I see a recipe in Bon Appetit or the New York Times cooking section headline: "Thin sliced pork braised in sour cabbage, lovely weeknight meal. Make it in your instant pot. Don't have Dongbei style fermented cabbage. Just sub in sauerkraut. You know, the kind that comes in a little resealable pouch. It's the same thing. Call it fusion. Your tweens are gonna love it." They might even put down TikTok for five seconds. Just kidding. 
That was a joke, mom. TikTok is never going away. And when I die, instead of RIP, I want my tombstone to say WAP. Here's how I think about it. My senior year, I was in the yearbook committee and some people had the idea to do a big spread of graduating seniors who looked alike. Admittedly, it was very vague and uh, the concept wasn't really even coming together. So far, they had two white girls with braces, two tall guys, and a pair of twins. I mean, that one was kind of a freebie. So then one day they approached me with, quote, the best idea ever. And that idea is to put me on the lookalike page alongside Kevin Park. Now, would you believe me if I told you that Kevin and I did not in fact look alike, but that he was indeed the one other Asian kid at my school? Sorry, my housemates and I were supposed to have dinner together, but it looks like they're eating out. Dang, I made way too much food then. Right, so what I wanted to say was, no, stop. Kevin and I don't look alike. Also, isn't this for seniors? He's a freshman. But what I actually said was, great idea, let's do it. Kevin, I'm sorry you got roped into this man. I mean, we should have gone on strike. I mean, really, like, doesn't it fall to us to say, no, look, as much as you want this to be a thing, certain whites, as much as you really, really want this to be a thing, firm cold tofu tossed in gochujang isn't Mapo tofu salad. I get it. Both things are spicy and red. You found the similarity and that's very smart of you. But the idea that Kevin and I want to entertain is fermented chili paste of a Korean tradition is somehow different from a numbing peppercorn chili oil of a Chinese one. I mean, what do you think, Kevin? Does it fall to us to say, this is chuan bai rou. Chuan bai rou. Chuan bai rou. Bai rou. Referencing the paleness of the meat highlights the simplicity of ingredients and is evocative of the numerous sauces that can be served alongside. Here we have garlic with black vinegar. Chuan is a culinary technique that refers to the suite of flash boiling, stewing, and braising techniques that's emblematic of Dongbei Cai, Northeastern Chinese cuisine from a region where fishermen haul their catch across frozen over lakes with the help of mules. A region that borders Russia and North Korea with a culinary tradition that's distinctly Chinese with Japanese, Korean, Russian, Mongolian, and even Manchurian influences. And that really in the first hundred years of Chinese diaspora in the States, you had very few migrants from this area. And that's probably why you're just now hearing about this dish. What do you think, Kevin? <laughs> Don't you kind of just want to eat already? I feel like I'm giving a speech. Isn't this tedious? I mean, we can't possibly be here to answer to their ignorance. Isn't this exhausting? Aren't you exhausted? <laughs>